The following is brought to you by GoldSeekMint.com. Silver and gold bullion directly from the mint. GoldSeekMint.com. Welcome to Cambridge House Live. I'm Vanessa Collette here at the Canadian Investor Conference, Vancouver. I'm joined by John Kaiser, editor of the Bottom Fishing Report and Kaiser Research Online. Welcome, John. Great to see you again. Vanessa, it's great to be here. John, what are some of the stories out there right now that you think are able to attract capital in this kind of environment? It's a very difficult uh, fundraising environment for the resource sector. During the first quarter, about a billion dollars got raised by uh, the more advanced projects like Torex Gold, uh, you know, the ones that have millions of ounces in the ground and that are moving towards a development uh, decision. Uh, towards the end, about mid-March, we started to get financings for discoveries like Pilot Gold, uh, Fission Energy, uh, uh, or Uranium. and. Uh, but that stopped, that has suddenly stopped. And for juniors that want to mount grassroots exploration, it is, it is very tough. You need to have almost a wonderful discovery hole before anybody will come running, running with, with money. And uh, I would say uh, it's, it's tough. Uh, gold's probably the one thing that money is available for, but uh, uh, iron, copper and that, it's kind of fading away. So that's how much the market's really changed. It takes a big discovery now for investors to get excited. So yeah, you're saying. There are no good metal uptrends in place right now. I think zinc will develop an uptrend in the next couple of years. But gold, after running almost back to $1,400, is retreated back below $1,250. There's a big drum hole to try and beat it up and get it down to $1,100. So it, it was very clear that the, um, the whole junior sector, it's very much tied to the destiny of the gold price and, and that makes it, makes it very, very tough. Now John, do you think it's getting any easier at all for companies to raise money right now? No, it's, 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 it's getting worse. We're now just done, been through the uh, sell in May and go away. We've got the summer doldrums coming. I think it's a good window to go bottom fishing for companies. I'm hopeful that we'll get a September rally going. The one thing, again, that could turn everything around fairly quickly is if gold spiked to fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars $1,600. But that's only going to happen in a case of extreme geopolitical stress, of which there are a number of, out there possibly right now. Russia is uh, trying to change the whole uh, narrative about globalization. China is uh, pushing back in its uh, South China Sea, uh, got a big oil rig going and got Vietnam all all upset so mm -hmm. there's some geopolitical stuff that could give gold a good spike why do you think gold hasn't responded so far to some of the things we've seen in syria and ukraine and, and with russia for example well none of those have any far-reaching consequences at this stage they are local problems uh, make life miserable for everybody there but they have no ramifications yet for uh, historical processes or anything like that and moving over to the companies, I think you've uh, referred to some of the zombie companies out there. Um, you said that you thought April would see a big clearing. What's the state of the, the industry You know, there? it appears that uh, they all got their audited financials filed. They must have uh, done some work around to get the accountants to be in a position to sign off on those financials. But sadly, the situation just gets worse. There's now over 700 companies out of the 1,700 that have negative working capital. And then there's another 400 uh, scraping around between zero and $500,000 working capital. Uh, it's, it's the failure of companies to get money back in the treasury when they do some results that aren't like a, a major discovery hole but are encouraging. The market, investors are being punished now by when, although the company has made progress, instead of the stock going higher and being able to finance the next stage of work at a better price than what the higher risk takers took earlier, it's the stocks are ending up lower and the early risk takers are being punished because the next group get benefiting from the de-risking gets to go on board at an even cheaper price. This is really hurting this sector. So new investors coming to the sector now are gonna do a lot better than people who have been in it this whole time. 
That's right. If, if you manage to sit out the decline in the last uh, four years, or at least took your, your money off the table, now's a good time to look around. And, and it's so easy now to see the dead, the dead companies, the pretend companies. They haven't been suspended or delisted, but they're there just trading as zombies, illiquid markets, undertaking rollbacks, going down 90%, uh, and just becoming shells, abandoning their assets, do, doing nothing. But there are still about 600 companies that have money, that are still trying to do something. But the bad thing is that these companies, uh, they're reluctant to spend a lot of money because of the difficulty in replacing the spent money. So right. we need money spent on exploration plays. We need a big discovery that catches everybody by surprise except the people who invested for precisely that reason and we need a discovery like that to have replication potential so that other juniors with competent teams can generate a similar prospect and tell the market we're going to do the same thing right now the glass is worse than half empty it's like everything is a failure before it begins well now you said that although the situation is bad right now is one of the best times possibly to make money why is that Valuations are extraordinarily low. Uh, you can see ounces and pounds in the ground. You can see companies with very interesting expiration plays that could deliver billion dollar type uh, home runs and you can get on board at extremely low valuations. However, there is a lottery ticket style aspect to this market in that there's no anticipation bubble as drilling programs get underway so that you can say sell some of your stock and let the rest ride. Everything is put up your money and pray. <laughs> Great. Now where are we with stockpiled metal and some of the surplus, surplus production? Copper is going into a surplus period. I mean what happened in the last decade really worked as copper roared over three bucks and uh, hit four bucks and then it's now settled back at three dollars. This mobilized a lot of new supply. So with the global economy not recovering as quickly as we had hoped and with China reducing its growth rate, uh, the anticipated consumption or demand for metals like copper is slower than expected and all this supply is coming on stream. So weak copper prices for a while, iron suffering the same thing. Nickel has a special situation in Indonesia because they've banned the export of raw laterite ore. So all of a sudden there's a shortage. I think that will be short-lived. Zinc is the one metal where more mines are shutting down than mines are coming on stream. And there's a possibility that China, which is the biggest supplier by far, may start cutting back its supply as its attempt to cut back on pollution kicks in. So zinc is the one metal that I can see an uptrend developing over the next couple of years. Interesting. Now there's been some excitement out there lately about scandium. What's the story there and what do you like about it? Well, scandium is this obscure metal which does wonderful things to the aluminum market. The aluminum market is $100 billion and if you put 0.5% scandium into it to create an aluminum scandium alloy. It, it makes the uh, aluminum stronger. It has, uh, it's more conductive. It has a higher, uh, high, higher melt point. The airline industry would love to make its airplanes out of aluminum scandium alloy brackets and skins. It would reduce their weight 15 to 20 percent. But they have never done it because it's just available as byproduct supply you know, from that's not scalable. They, they've, I've heard said that they would take three, Airbus would take 300 tons of scandium oxide a year for the next 10 years at say $2,000 a kilo if it were available. But because it's very low grade in nature, it has never been available on a reliable scale. But something's changed in the last five years in New South Wales of Australia. Okay. High grade scandium deposits have been found, 300 uh, grams per ton and higher, which now open up the possibility of primary scandium supply. So scandium could go from a 20, 40 million dollar market a year to 500 million to a billion dollars and juniors have hold of these discoveries. Interesting. And are there any companies out there that are looking for scandium or that you've seen? There are uh, Four com three or four companies that have made these discoveries. One of them, EMC Metals, is one that I have adopted. 
they are $3 million away from owning the Ningen deposit on which a feasibility study was done a year ago and which they intend to redo the feasibility study with somewhat different technology. This could be in production in two years and demonstrate that primary scandium supply is possible. And because these are big pancake type deposits that just sit there at surface, mining's not an issue. There's a lot of this stuff there, far more than the market will initially take. But it, once it's demonstrated, it's, it's kind of like a field of dream story. If you build this supply, the end users will come because all the latent demand is there already. Customers are already lined up. Yes. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, John. It was a pleasure chatting with you, and um, hope you enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you very much, Vanessa.